What's going on, guys? It is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. I am back. I want to let you know to not give up. Do not give up on your life. Do not give up on your dreams. Do not give up on your family. This is going to be the best year of your life. I believe in you, so keep going. So season two has brought us a truckload of change, right? And with how difficult it can be to keep up, it's not like, you know, we're going to be playing flawlessly or anything like that. We're all going to be making mistakes during this transition, period. And that's just the truth because at the end of the day, we're human and everybody slips up now and then, right? But what's critical is that we learn from our mistakes, guys. So today in this video, we're going to be going over five common mistakes holding you back in season two. Not all of these may apply to you, but based on what we've seen so far, these are the most significant ones you need to watch out for. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's about that time for the question of the day. Let me ask you this. What mistake are you making the most in season two? Let me know in the comments section. I'm curious to find out. Are you looking to gain an edge on the competition for season two? You should visit ProGuides.com. We've got courses handcrafted by expert pros such as Mongo and Benji Fishy that can teach you everything you need to know to get better. Plus, you know, with live coaching available 24-7, you can always request a session with our roster of pros for a more intimate learning experience. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel, then head on over to ProGuides.com or follow the link in the description to get started. All right, guys, let's jump in. All right, guys, it's about that time. Ladies and gentlemen around the world, you guys got to scream this out with me. You ready? It's time to sit back, relax, and grab some of my favorite candy. What is that? It's that bunch of crunch. And let's get this going. So the first and biggest mistake players are making this season is complaining instead of adapting. If you're like, hey, I haven't been whining, I love the new season, then you know what, that's fantastic for you. But based on a lot of discussions we've read, so many players that, you know, fancy themselves competitive are complaining about the changes nonstop. Instead, you know, what they should be doing is focusing on their energy on adapting. So we went over the changes the comp community is hating on a recent video, but just to reiterate, there aren't fans of mythic weapons, you know, the henchmen and bosses, as well as all the involting of a lot of quote unquote OP items. But here's the thing, guys, like, you know, even if the new weapons are OP and mythic weapons are just unfair to play against, at the end of the day, there's really no benefit to complaining about them, right? You know, all that does is just put you in this horrible mindset where you think nothing can be improved, you know, that no counters exist or that you just can't come up with a tactic or strategy to overcome the changes. But the season's brand spanking new, guys. So strategies and metas typically take at least, you know, a week to develop and sometimes even longer. So it really does make sense that all of these old items coming back are catching players off guard. I get it. A lot of us have forgotten just how to play against them. That's not to say, you know, that the item pool is balanced or anything like that. You know, there are definitely some issues that need some tweaking, at least in our opinion. But the majority of adverse reactions we're seeing feel very premature. So if you find yourself frustrated after dying to a drum gun or a stack of C4, our advice is not to blame the game, okay? Instead, you should just look to see what you could have done differently. Because truthfully, at the end of the day, you know, chances are at least one play you could have done differently to live. Whether that's something like building more or, you know, even positioning even better. So guys, please quit moaning, all right? Start adapting. You can do it and you can see yourself getting better in no time. The next mistake we've noticed tons is an overcommitment to the new locations. You know, a lot of players seem to be trapped in this mindset that, you know, they have to land at the new POIs. And, you know, to be fair, I can see why. I get it. You know, those shiny new mythic weapons are mighty and tempting. I get it. But here's the thing, guys. Just because you can potentially get a mythical item doesn't mean you'll suddenly just start winning more games. Let's say you land at the agency because, you know, you want that sweet, sweet drum gun. But if 14 other players drop with you all for the same reason, only one of you guys is going to get out alive. And assuming all players are equally skilled, it's pretty much a 1 in 15 chance of surviving. That's crazy. After all, all right, so these spots are designed to be high risk, high reward. But I guess the question is like whether or not that risk is worth it. We haven't had really any tournaments yet on the new patch, but you know, I'm guessing that when the first ones come around, it's going to be players landing at the old spots coming out on top. The new ones just feel, you know, like just too volatile and just really too hard to control. So with that being said, you should definitely still spend several matches dropping at each new POI so you can just learn the basics. Then use that to gauge, you know, whether or not you think it'll be suitable, you know, to land there in the future. Because honestly, they're not going to fit everyone's playstyle. 
Think of it like Tilted Towers. All right, so tons of players landed there simply because there was way more loot in those buildings than anywhere else. But at the same time, it was incredibly dangerous. So not everyone preferred it, right? So were you the type of player that just loved hot dropping at Tilted? Or were you the kind that preferred a low key area so you can just slowly work your way up to a fighting condition? That's pretty much the question you're gonna have to ask yourself when it comes to these new zones. All right, guys, so next up, another mistake we're seeing players make this season is relying too much on single boxes to turtle with. So there really is no secret that Epic added a bunch of hard counters to turtling in season two. They brought back remote explosives, mini guns, and the notorious heavy sniper. There's also the mythic drum gun, which, you know, straight up cuts through builds like butter. So with all these now in the game, creating only a single box to turtle puts you in an extremely vulnerable position. It was like that in the past too, but now with C4 and endless minigun spam, there's only so little that you can do to try to survive. So to circumvent all of this, what players need to start doing now is build larger bases when turtling. Either expand width wise, like, you know, like a two by two or just build upward. Bigger bases accomplish a couple of things. All right, so first and foremost, you know, they make it harder for your opponent to pinpoint your position. This is absolutely crucial if you want to avoid some maniac just walking up and jumping right into your base. Second, they give you more room to maneuver should you get pushed. You know, as long as you stay close to your walls, there's always an edit that you can make and use to fall back on. So one of the downsides of, you know, building larger turtles is, of course, you know, using more materials. Still, you know, I think that the pros outweigh the cons here, though. You know, as long as you're not building the 13th century castle, you know, committing extra mats is going to be beneficial. Because really, what would you rather do? Use another 50 mats in a fight to expand your base or die right because you stood still in a single box? I think the answer is pretty clear. All right, guys, so coming up next is a quick tip. This one isn't specific to the new season or anything like that, but a lot of players are forgetting to upgrade their weapons. So ever since Epic reduced the price of upgrading weapons, it's become a lot more viable to visit an upgrade bench and soup up your gear, right? It, it used to require like way too many mats, but now all it takes is a bit of your time and you can get some serious firepower. These are the things you need to watch out for though. Like first off, make sure you have time to farm up the mats you spin. Typically, you know, right after the early game is the best time, but you know, only if you're zone favored, of course. If you're visiting an upgrade bench during the mid game, make sure you have at least a minute or two before like spending all your mats on an upgrade. Then when it comes to like choosing what item to upgrade, going from blue to purple rarity is the best leap. Beyond that, you know, pump shotties and rocket launchers see the most significant jump in stats, so you gotta prioritize those when you can. And finally, the last mistake we're constantly seeing is the misuse of launch pads. Okay, so we saw this old favorite return to Arena at the start of the season, but because they were gone for over four months, I feel like a lot of players forgot just how hazardous it could be to use one. Since launch pads leave you stuck gliding in the air for a set amount of time, you gotta be very careful using them, okay? It's not like you can just build midair so you won't be able to defend yourself against an enemy rifle fire. And if their aim is really good, you're gonna be dead before you can even touch the ground. All right, so what you should consider before using one? Hmm. Well, first, you gotta weigh the urgency. Do you even need to launch anywhere or could you just run for it? If it's not urgent, please don't bother taking the risk. Second, assess the number of players near you. If it's a lot, you might be better off just rotating on foot or just waiting until they leave so you can just swoop in late. The third, guys, look at your health. Are you low? Can a single shot just finish you off? If so, you should definitely just try to find a way to heal up before launching out. We've seen this so many times where someone, you know, at one shot health tries to pad away only to get dropped midair. It rarely works. And fourth, how far is your destination? If it's up to like 200 meters away, a launch pad on its own can get you there. But if it's a shorter distance, like under 75 meters, you should definitely set up a low pad. You can do all of this, guys, by putting a ramp or a cone, edit it into a ramp above the pad. It might leave you with a bruise on your head, but it'll definitely decrease the time you spend in the air and make those short launches much safer. And one final tip, ladies and gentlemen, you gotta make yourself a harder target to hit. Zigzag and move unpredictably while midair. Always, guys. Even if you think the area is clear, there's really no reason just fly in a straight line. It only makes it easier for your opponents to laser you down. And it just makes it easier for your opponents. Well, that's definitely something that you want to avoid. All right, guys, so ladies and gentlemen, it's about that time to do a recap. Let's do this. So instead of, you know, fuming over all the wacky changes that came with the new season, just keep a level head and just try to adapt to them, all right? I guarantee that there are strategies that people haven't even discovered yet that you could use to gain an edge, but you're never gonna find them if all you're doing is complaining. And while all the new POIs definitely contain the best loot in the game, that doesn't mean that it's always gonna be worth landing at. 
So, you know, playing it slow and steady is often a better choice. And right now, man, these new landing spots are anything but that. Also, you know, like with the C4, you know, mini guns and a whole bunch of turtle counters this season, man, sitting inside a single base endangers you like way more than before. Anytime you have to box up, consider creating at least two boxes that you could just stay safe for longer. So when you've got the time to farm more mats, upgrade your weapons, you know, most players seem to forget, but it's legitimately an excellent way just to gain an advantage next to no cost. And before you use a launch pad, you gotta consider your health, you gotta do it, how many players are nearby, and whether or not you even need to use one. With the rise of the controller scrima, you know, launch pads are riskier than ever. So always guys, be cautious before using one. All right, guys, once again, this is your motivation guy. But anyway, that's it for today's video. Hope you guys found the tips useful. And if you did, show us some love and like the video. We're gonna be releasing a lot more of this in season two, so make sure to subscribe, click that bell so you can be notified. We'll see you next time.